Hello everyone, this is Josh of Mabro Films, and no, your eyes do not deceive you. This is not Minecraft. This game is in fact a game by the title of Star Maid. Uh, Star Maid, similar to Minecraft, um, it involves blocks. Uh, and it involves mining, digging, and all that. But beyond that, much further beyond that, into space, we can go there. How do we go there? Well, we can just simply walk off this planet and be in space. We're already in our regulation spacesuits. But to better travel to space, we need a ship. A ship that'll take us into the stars. Visit other planets. But no, really. Um, in this video series, I'm going to be teaching you guys the ins and outs of Star Made and teaching you how to work things and how to get yourself a ship. That will not only be, um, you know, efficient in its block usages, uh, but, you know, it'll allow you to think about how the game works and then from there proceed on your own and, you know, make your own wildest imaginations. Uh, make yourself a Star Destroyer, if you feel, or even a Death Star. Uh, because you, not only can you make spaceships, but you can also make space stations. Uh, also noting that there are enemy AI in the area. Well, not in my current area, but, you know, there's space pirates that'll attack you on immediate sight, hunt you down, blow you to pieces. Uh, and then there's also um, the trading guild, which are neutral, but God forbid if you dare attack them. But to get started, um, if you haven't played the uh, game, if you haven't done the tutorial, uh, tutorial um, you wouldn't know this, but to start, you're going to want to hit X. This will bring up the ship core in your... Uh, inventory and allows you to name it. We're just going with go with the SS Umadbro Films. Nice and simple. So this is your ship core. This is essentially the pilot seat. Uh, as you can see, you can get in it. You can fly around in it. Um, it's not the fastest acceleration and braking, but uh, beyond that, you can dock to things, and that's about it. Now to add more functionality to you to this, you're gonna have to go ahead and upgrade its systems. So go ahead and hit spacebar and it'll bring you into the build mode. Um, so there's a few things that are required for a ship to essentially function properly. Uh, the first thing being you're going to need power cores. Uh, the second you're going to need an engine. And then third you're going to need some sort of weapon system to protect yourself in the great black yonder. But anyways, uh, to essentially start, you're going to want to go ahead and you know, lay down some blocks. No, I don't want to delete it. Um, now, while building, you just you want to remember and keep this in mind that in any of your designs, it doesn't matter if you don't have blocks connecting. Uh, the way the game works is that as soon as you put down a ship core and add blocks to the ship core in this build menu, that block is now attached to that ship core. So even if your ship has been destroyed, split in half, um, these blocks are still connected. Uh, so basically with this in mind, now we can go ahead and build our ship core. Uh, ship cores are, or well, the engine I mean. So basically this right here is the power supply block and the game works off of um, essentially creating the most efficient situation where if you place it uh, place your energy blocks in a certain format, you're going to get the highest recharge output uh, versus, uh, say, for instance, uh, you do this. Uh, if you look on the left side, you can see that it's currently at 500 uh, and 1.4 energy per second recharge rate. Um, and keeping in mind that the maximum energy of any vessel is 20,000 energy units. Um, but once I delete this, it goes down about 24 energy units. However, noting that this was at 500, but if I put it over here, that becomes 600 instead of 500. So that's 124, um, you know, energy recharge increase. And because of this, this right here is the most efficient way to add in your energy blocks. Uh, and to expand upon this, you're going to want to go ahead and just Go corner to corner, and then fill in all your corners. 
a little something like this. And then you also want to be sure that you don't have these attached to your other uh, energy blocks and you want to keep these individual separate um, energy units uh, and this will get you the highest amount of efficiency. Now from here uh, you notice that your maximum recharge rate is only at 1900. Uh, so you know it's pretty low still so if you want to go ahead and expand upon this you can either do one of two things. You can either go ahead and build more of these miniature energy cubes or you can go ahead and add another layer to this. Um, it's fairly simple to do it. All you have to do is make sure that you're not actually connected and to make sure you're not connected you just want to go add a diagonal to this. And then just expand upon it further as you were with the miniature um, corner T-shape um, axis layout for things uh, just go ahead and continue on your design and making sure that you only have one corner touching on three of the uh, extensions so it's fairly simple to comprehend um, you know, it's get as much energy recharge without, you know, using so many blocks that it encumbers your ship. Now, from here, you notice that we're currently only at 7,796 recharge rate, meaning that we haven't even reached half of uh, recharge rate efficiency. So with this now in mind you can go ahead and get yourself more of these energy uh, generators and make more of these or you can also go ahead and get another type of energy generator um, so which I don't actually have any on me and then just go ahead and fill in all the spaces and that should technically get you around up to 10,000. Um, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to go ahead and continue through here. Um, so now that you have your power, your ship core and now that you have your functioning energy generator, you're going to want to go ahead and put some propulsion onto this. Now propulsion doesn't have to be at the back of the ship. Uh, it doesn't matter where it is and it doesn't even matter if it's totally encased. Uh, think of it as kind of a more Acme UFO um, hover system uh, as long as it's inside the vehicle it provides thrust and while it while thrusters do um, benefit from the same T uh, joining uh, the energy requirement for thrusters to work is so low that you can just go ahead and mass them in any sort of form and by doing this you're not only applying redundancies but you know it's just keep adding them until you have enough thrust. Uh, so for right now, that'll do. And keep in mind also that the maximum speed for any ship is currently 50 kilometers per hour. Not that fast, but it's fast enough for the game. All right, so in all essential purposes, right now what we have here is a fully functioning spaceship. But space is a hostile place. So we're going to want to go ahead and add some weapons to this thing. Uh, in order to do this, you're going to need to have a weapons computer. Uh, currently in the game, there are four different weapons computer and a fifth type of weapon. Uh, these being the, uh, the most basic of them, the antimatter cannon. And then there is a straight fire rocket. There is a heat seeking rocket and there is a rocket that requires a lock on. Uh, then there is a fifth sort of dumb weapon, meaning it doesn't require a computer to use. It is a Minecraft equivalent of a TNT block. Uh, we've called these here, though, disintegrator explosives. Uh, and these things require that you provide an impact to the block to actually detonate. And also, these are the only blocks that can do damage to your own ship. So keeping that in mind, the only ways to really use it are that either... 
make a lance and stick a ball of explosive at the end of it, or to find something more creative like strapping rockets to an asteroid and flinging that into the enemy. But, you know, this is one of those situations where you're going to need to explore on your own and create an alternative that works for you. However, we're going to be going ahead and sticking with the basic antimatter cannons. Uh, so you're just going to want to go ahead and stick a weapons computer anywhere on the ship. It doesn't matter where, just as long as you have one. Uh, from here, it's going to be automatically selected. Uh, but for later on, uh, when you actually want to add more lasers, make sure you go out to this weapons computer and hit C to select it, and then you can add more lasers to your system. So laser lasers work and benefit from the same uh, T shapes, but once again, like the engines, uh, they don't require much energy to actually fully really reach their potential, so you can go ahead and put them in mass uh, and allow them to have redundancies in the system. So when you're fighting, you're not going to get your weapons knocked out in a couple shots. So you just go ahead and put these in. Now, notice these purple boxes. These purple boxes show all these weapons are connected to the weapons computer. And then the fact is that these weapons, these are actually all just part of one weapon. And as such, this will fire one laser, and all of these blocks are simply providing the output for the laser. So if you want, say, a second twin laser, you're just going to have to go ahead and put in a separated uh, laser unit. And you can do this as many times as you want for individual laser systems. Um, and really, that's about it. Now, to actually fire and pilot the weapon, just go ahead and hit space. And now you are in flight mode. So now you have both your pitch, your yaw, uh, your forward, rear... Uh, reverse, uh, you know, left, right, and then you can look around. Uh, and that looking around is attached to your mouse. Uh, to actually activate your weapon system, just go ahead, hit T to your weapons management system. Uh, go ahead and click on your weapons computer. Now, in here, you'll notice that you can actually select the preferences of your weapon. Uh, you have a total of 100% power distribution to your weapons. And as such, you can reduce the damage to increase something else or re reduce the, say, the speed at which the projectile travels and increase something else. Uh, but this you can do for each weapon. And as you can see, because we put in two separate banks of the anti-material anti uh, anti cannon, I mean, uh, we can actually individually adjust the properties we want for each of the turrets separately. Uh, so to actually activate and use the weapon, you're going to want to go ahead and click weapons computer and then a number key to bind it to that. Uh, this isn't something where you would actually go, uh, say, like a hotkey battle. Uh, this is just simply allowing you to select that weapon and then left click to fire. Let's go ahead and shoot up this point. Now, as you can see, the weapons are firing pretty slow. Uh, this, however, can be increased considerably. Uh, with the addition of more weapons cores uh, or more generators. And, you know, with a simple click of the space bar, you can go ahead and get back into the build mode. Uh, this is also pretty good for looking around and finding additional uh, targets and things like that. Of which, by hitting F, you can actually go ahead and lock on to different things. Uh, but this pretty much covers the basics for right now. You have your uh, energy system, you have your propulsion, and you have your defenses. Uh, next episode, we'll go ahead and cover uh, shielding, uh, and then beyond that, there's also factories, uh, you know, hole management, and things like that. Uh, but keep in mind, this isn't what your ship has to look like. This is just simply a little demonstration of uh, putting things together to make something that'll fly and shoot, and, you know, essentially allow you to actually get somewhere. So for now, I am Josh of Umabro Films, and I will see you guys next time.